welcome to the 2019 Hyundai Ioniq, now in its second revision, unpacking a 38.3 kilowatt hour battery pack, 10 more than its predecessor, and with over 40 miles more range. We've had a week to test its performance overall, which included floods, almost running out of charge, plenty of rapid charging, which contrary to popular belief, isn't slow at all, and when the Ionic displays 134 miles range, it means 134 miles range, and at motorway speeds. I purposefully made it my daily driver, I managed along with James over 500 miles in total, and I have to say 500 pleasant miles they were. This range-topping Premier C model that we're testing here comes with LED DRLs, dip and high beam, and the rear also benefits from LED stop and tails, but in the daylight that means nothing. You'll only get to really appreciate how good these are on a dark country lane, just like this. Amazing just about sums it up. The auto high beam also works perfectly, with no delay. Keyless entry makes getting in easy, and you're welcomed by powerful mirrors. The boot is huge and swallowed our pushchair easily, even with both the supplied charging leads in place. Inside, a gentle push of the start-stop button fires the TFT display into life, which is very easy to read. You have Eco Plus, Eco, Sport and Normal Mode to choose from, but I preferred Normal Mode for everyday use. And Easy Exit Entry Mode makes getting in and out super easy. The gear selector is excellent and rarely needs more than a quick glance and tucked away behind is the three-stage heated and ventilated seats, which I'm in love with. My fascination with drinks holders was fulfilled easily, eight in total, including two in the rear armrest, and I'm sure the glove box would take one more bottle. Wireless phone charging is useful, but I'm always plugged in, so I'm not sold on its necessity, and should you need to charge, you're well catered for. The reverse camera is excellent and allows a very useful two-point view when you're up very close, and more surprisingly is at night, it's just as clear to see. And when you do go into reverse, the auto levering mirrors are equally as useful. The driver benefits from a two-stage memory seat. However, the reach and rake is manual, but it seems easy to find a comfortable position. Jumping in the back, leg and headroom is again ample with a driver's seat set to my position, and the rear passengers also benefit from two-stage heated seats. Another gripe of mine is noisy wipers, but none of that here, these are virtually silent. Lane follow assist got a fair bit of use too, and I'm pleased to report it's excellent, even on the motorway in not great conditions, it never faltered once. And the blind spot monitoring was also excellent. Lastly, a massive thanks to the Chorley Group for the loan of the Ionic. It's much appreciated. Good morning, we've been driving the Ionic now for six days, and it's really nice. I think we've got our standard disagreement over a couple of things. As before, when we drove the previous version of the Ionic, I had a bit of an issue with, with how it looked, the exterior. Um, and I have to say, this is better, but it still, for me, isn't a car that I look at and go, yes. But saying that, we have a couple of friends who have an Ionic and they've got a certain they've got a certain setup with the exterior. They've got a spec which looks really, really good. So it's on this model or the previous one? It was the previous model. Okay, yeah. And it looked really good. I don't know what they'd done or how they'd spec'd it, but it looked really good. So but this particular spec I just I don't look at it and think, wow, there's a couple of things I just really don't like about but it. But do you look at it and think it's livable? Oh yeah, definitely. Okay, okay. But the I think we've got Florence now and the practicalities and other things kind of that way, the way yeah, a car looks. Yeah. But for me, it's just not something I look at and think, wow. Okay. What about the split screen? Yeah, that, that one a lot of people have asked about. Um, and indeed, it does have a split screen with a like a spoilery type thing across it, and it does impede your view. Mm. Uh, yeah, that, I'm not sure why, but it's there. Um, it is heated, so you can you can clear the mist off it quite well. It does fog up a little bit. You can probably see it has fogged up now. It seems to continually do that, but it does clear quite quickly. I've just turned the heat screen on, and you can probably already see it's nice to clear. Mm. Uh, and it does get dirty very quickly. However, 
uh, I have it on good authority from an owner of one of these. If you just put some rain X across the back screens um, and the camera, in fact, it will it will mitigate that. Why does it so, get dirty more quickly than any other? I, d I think it's maybe the angle. Okay. Yeah, I, d I don't Strange. know. I don't know. I'll, I'll just be guessing, to be honest. But that's that's that, those are my two bad points. So I've got a third. Oh. Um, it's it's not a biggie, but it's something that people often talk about, and that is road noise. I don't know whether you can hear it now because. Well, we've got Florence playing the computer in the back, and um, it's actually not that bad. But because it's so quiet in all other areas, yeah. it, it seems it seems louder. Um, like now? Yeah, because we've just changed road surface. It is just yeah. down to the tyres. It's got uh, low roller resistance tyres on it, and sadly, if you are very efficient tyres, you do tend to incur a little bit of road noise. So that's it now, bad, points, it. bad I, points are out of the way. I hope so. Some others might come up and if they do, I'm sorry, but I don't think so. Okay. Okay, so on to the good points. The first one I want to put out there is the efficiency. It's, it's completely, it's unparalleled. I don't think that anything is as efficient as this at motorway speeds. And I mean, you picked this up from Blackpool the other day and you mm. said on the way home, it was just 74 five miles an hour on the private stretch and you said it was amazing it, it was, it, 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 was, was. Just, it just it just chucked out 140 miles no problems at all yeah. no no issues no range anxiety um and and the weather was how was weather pretty shocking wasn't it storm something yeah probably it was a storm, storm a storm of one kind or another <clears throat> so yeah the the efficiency but everybody knows that about the arnic it is a very efficient car so you will run this at compared to some EVs at half the cost so which is impressive it is because you'll be paying instead of 3 PMR you'll be paying 1.5 PMR <laughs> so the savings aren't great <laughs> but over a long period of time yes yeah. you could probably buy yourself I don't know a bar of chocolate or something yeah but still impressive it is I think one of the real um, positives for me about the Ionic is the interior I love it I love the way it looks. It's it's really spacious. You've got so much storage. You don't know what to do with it. Mm. And um, the layout is just very simplistic. It's a lot of touch touch um, sensitive buttons. Well, it's all touch sensitive buttons, isn't it? Pretty much. Yeah, pretty much. And yeah. uh, really nice big screen, especially especially important when you're trying to use Apple CarPlay. It makes it very very easy to use. Apple CarPlay is instant. And in this particular car, the Apple CarPlay fills the screen, Android Auto doesn't it? It chops half of it off and That's weird. puts an Android Auto sticker up on the right, which is a little bit frustrating because mm. you need the you want to utilise that you screen, want the don't full you? Screen. Yeah. So one other real positive for me is the is the heated and ventilated seats. And um, I really do like to be warm and they're incredibly good. They're three stage, which I like. So yeah. it's not just a case of hot or not. You've got you know, you can choose your your temperature that you want your bottom to be. Um, now I didn't realise they were ventilated, just ridiculously initially, until James sneakily put it on and then all of a sudden I started to get a cold bottom and I really couldn't work out why. Um, so they work very efficiently too and I think in the, in the summer, sorry, I'm sure that would be very useful. So on to price, we're looking at £32,000 for this particular spec, is that right? Uh, yeah, premium SE. I think this one is okay so yeah this is uh, sort of flagship top of the range okay so yeah quite pricey but in comparison to a lot of other cars that we've driven it's actually not that different in price like we you know with the Peugeot E208 that we drove the other day for instance 33 was that it was around about for the top, top that the yeah I and mean, look how much bigger this car is and yeah it's you're definitely getting more for your money with this than you were with the Peugeot 208. I'd agree with that. I would. The, so, sorry, go on. You go. I was going to say, that, so the Peugeot's got a 50 kilowatt hour battery, but actually you'll probably find the range is very similar and that comes down to that efficiency thing. So this is this is almost definitely going to be a, a I'm going to say a better buy because okay. the, the space you've got in the back, the boot space, um, you know, everything we've done, like the buggy test, yeah. Buggy test, it went well. There's a, there's a lot of pros for this car overall, isn't there? So, so the buggy did go in, but the security liner 
didn't go across, did it? No, it was above that, but it... But it, it still fits. Yeah, and all, but also, if you... Because you've got privacy glass on the back, it sort of mitigates that to a yeah. degree, doesn't it? You, you've, got, you've got quite a lot of security anyway in the, in the rear. Yeah. Getting Florence in and out was okay. It's definitely better than the Tesla. Not as good as the MG, not as good as the Leaf. Yes, I, I got that. I was, I was conscious of, of how bent over you were yeah. trying to get her in. What about when you put the car seat in itself? Was that... Pretty similar, really. Yeah, okay. You, you're having to bend yes. much more than it would be would, than it would be nice to. Yes, but okay. But not a big issue. No. Whereas Florence is getting bigger, she pretty much gets herself in now. Mm. So, space in the back, though, is pretty excellent. What do you think to the, the seats in terms of um, sort of stability and and lateral support? I think I'm a bit narrower than you. Yeah. So they're not as snug fitted. Perhaps as a, again, the, I'm trying to think now. Perhaps as the leaf, a leaf would be, or I'm trying to think of something that has really good seats. Tesla? Tesla. Yeah. That's much more snug for me. Yeah. But yeah. It's, it's not bad. I find these a little bit flat on the base. Do you? Yeah, I feel that I just feel like they could have a little bit. More, oh, on the side. Yeah, so on the squab at the bottom, they could just have a little bit more support there. Yeah. The bolster is not too bad. It's not too bad, but yeah, it's. They're okay. Yeah, but this the, the driver seat's fully electric. Um, the passenger seat isn't. Uh, you've got an electric bolster on this as well. Did you realise that? No. Yeah, electric bolster. Oh, I should have uh, an electric bolster. Yeah, it's very nice if you need it. In terms of the way it feels on the road. Uh, it's it's really good. Directional stability is ace. It's just it holds a straight line very nicely, and it, it takes up undulation nicely as well. The it's got like a kind of a pro pilot lane follow assist or autopilot to a degree type thing, and it works really well. Um, on the motorway journeys I do to and from work, I used it for a couple of days, and it was fine. Overall handling. It's nice. Yeah, it is really it is nice. nice. It's a firm ride, isn't it? Yeah, it does feel quite solid, but I quite like that. So, it's, yeah, it's, it definitely feels that they've got the balance right between not too firm and not too soft. Yeah, I agree. Okay, on to acceleration. And I'm going to be honest, it's adequate, uh, but it's poor. It's it's very laggish, it, off, just off the mark. There's, it's been mapped with a bit of a delay. Uh, so it sort of doesn't give you that shove in the back, which is fine. You know, it's 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 perfect for just everyday driving. Yeah. It, you know, don't 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 get me wrong. It, it, you you won't need the acceleration in many situations, but when you do want to show your friends how quick an electric car is, this isn't the car to do it. It's no. probably, probably the best way to explain that. But like I say, everyday use, no problem at all. I haven't really driven it in sport mode, and it's not been an issue for me. The speed. No. I've pretty much had it in eco, mm. Mm. so we flipped it into sport mode to have a quick play, didn't we? Yes, we did. But that's pretty much been it. Yeah. But on the flip side of that, that brings me on to regen. So the regen is fantastic. I have it set to auto and I have it set to level three on auto and that seems to work perfectly for me. I like to recuperate everything I can, I don't like to use the friction brakes at all. and. Yeah, it's it's definitely there. Much more than I'm going to say more than our Model S. Not Do you as think? much. Yeah, not, not as much. Well, look, if I let off now. Oh yeah, you're right. Sorry. That's, that's pretty <laughs> strong, isn't it? Yeah, it's. It's it's definitely there. Not as much as an i3. I think the i3 still pips it. That's yeah. But what this does have is it has these little flappy paddles on the left and the right of the steering wheel, which for me, are just you don't even have to move your foot to the brake pedal. You can just pull yourself to a stop with this left hand pedal. And that is just absolute laziness and I love it. But it's a, it's a relaxed mm. car, isn't it? It yeah. makes you feel, it's one of those cars again, which makes you feel relaxed when you drive it. Yes. And you don't want to hammer it. No. Like the Tesla now, we're like, okay, we always said, you get that little bit of initial thing out of your system and you just you drive it in a really chilled way and this is the same. Okay, range. This is one of the big things that all EVs suffer from in the world of non-EV drivers. They don't go far enough, but this one does. This is incredible. So 38.3 kilowatt hour usable battery and 155 to 160 miles usable range mm. in real world driving. And that's 
70, 75, 80, you know, people do drive at 80 miles an hour, regardless of whether it's illegal or not, people do do it and will continue to do it. And this will do that. Yeah. It will do it. What, what, is that consistent with what you've been seeing? Yeah, completely. Yeah, it's, that drive back from Blackpool, when you got home and told me about the weather, and I was just completely blown away. Mm. Because if I'd have done that in a leaf, oh, my word. it would have been, uh, it would have been <laughs> a sub 100 miles, guaranteed sub 100 miles. You'd have been able to watch it just disappear, yes, wouldn't you? Yes, yeah. But not this. Yeah. This just just gets on with it in a way that no other EV, apart from a Tesla Model 3, will do. <laughs> yeah. It is impressive. It is. It definitely is. I'm blown away by that. Really blown away by it. And this is what we need to be aiming for as EVs because it, it, it does a lot of other things. It means it costs you less. It means batteries need to be smaller. It means you have less time on charges. Mm. You know, there's a massive knock-on effect of, of efficiency. And just having this car, means you will spend less time on the charger yeah. and you know le less time doing 55 miles an hour yeah so well done Hyundai for that well done it's it's really good it's really good and consistent with what they're doing as a whole mm. yeah. so I think we've pretty much exhausted it it's certainly been one of the easiest reviews that we've done and I don't really feel like we've had much debate over it which is really not normal for us I think the only thing we've really disagreed on is the exterior would you say that any of the bad points would stop you buying it or stop you owning it? Could you use this as an everyday car? Yeah. Yeah, I could. I've, I've been completely and utterly blown away by this. Yeah. It's amazing. Really, really amazing. I really like the E208. That was, you know, the one, the last review that we did yeah. together. But this, it's just got so much more to it that this I would have over the E208. It, it's a step up, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. So, with that in mind, mm -hmm. Would you would you buy one of these? Yeah. Would you have it as your first EV over a Leaf? Yes. Zoe? Yes. Better. Try and factor in price as well. There's not much between them actually in the grand scheme of things. Yes, I yeah. would. Um, Both of those. What about a Kona EV? Yes, because of the boot space. It's not bad. It's important for us that. Yeah. Yeah, I've, I do love this, I'm going to say. I yeah. do. Right. I think we're done, aren't we? We are. It's really good. Excellent. No issues. High five. Right. Well, that's it. So, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and follow us on Twitter at Kate Phantom. And we'll see you again soon with another episode. Florence, say bye-bye. Good girl. Good girl.